Mantras out there, you know, but we can see that you know so many mantras out there. All the things that we chant throughout the day, do they really fully satisfy us? Do they really fully satisfy the heart? Sure, why not? Of course they do. Well, then why are so many people, especially my age, 20, 25, um, doing drugs? still trying to get um, a little bit of satisfaction, watching, like, they call them movie marathons. Now, I've done them in the past, and all these things I've done, so it's no judgment on anyone. Anything I say, just going forward, it's things I've done, so, you know, we're all, and then we've all done it, we've all experienced it, generally speaking. And in my experience, none of those things fully satisfied my heart. In fact, it made it harder to feel anything, basically. You know, it gives you square eyes, um, it makes the heart hard, and it makes it difficult to feel. And what kind of life is that? And we're all innocent in it as well, because we don't know. We're not taught anything by our parents, by our grandparents, by schools, and, you know, in genuine civilization and culture, the grandparents are meant to be like, extremely wise and able to impart so much wisdom, but again, they're innocent as well. It's just the culture. You know, we're basically taught as a culture to live by consume and die, and that's it. We're not, we're not taught to become self-realized in any way, to experience deep realizations, to experience deep satisfaction. So what can we impart to younger generations? Um, we just think, oh, I, I lived my life, and my life is my life, and that was it, and now I'm going to die, and it doesn't matter how it affected anyone else, and it doesn't matter what's going to happen after I die. That's basically like modern Western culture, modern Western ideology, modern Western line of thought. And um, now the modern Western culture is not just in the West, so to speak. You know, it's not just in the, the European countries. It's it's almost everywhere and it's becoming more and more um, uh, prevalent. So you can even see like in like these sacred ancient cultures like in India and, and different parts of Asia and things like that, generally speaking, you know, it's becoming more and more lost. These ancient sacred um, lines of thought, practices, approaches to life, ways to become fully self-satisfied and self-realized. Um, yeah, and so this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, um, this great mantra for this age, and this age is described as Kali Yuga, it's what it's called according to the Yoga and uh, Wisdom Meditation and Meditation Texts. Kali means quarrel and hypocrisy and Yuga means age. So we're currently in the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. And uh, we can see that on all levels. You don't have to look very far. You don't have to look far. Like, you don't have to look at all. You just, um, you can see it everywhere. On a personal level, on a mental level, there's quarrel and hypocrisy. Um, in our actions, there's quarrel and hypocrisy. Dealings with other people on a um, cultural and societal level, among cultures and societies, so it's everywhere and it's spreading. It's, it's um, it's like a virus, basically, and, um, you know, everything we're currently doing isn't helping very much, it's kind of, um, breeding, so if that's the right word, this, this virus of quarrel and hypocrisy, and so what, I mean, isn't, isn't that just the normal, you know, of course, in a way, in a sense, yes, it is normal, it's normal for us, um, so why question it? You know, well, is it is it benefiting anyone in any way, shape, or form? I don't think so. 
So whatever isn't benefiting anyone in any way, shape or form, we should question and we should look for something new, something different, something unknown even, even though it can be scary. And um, those who are practicing self-realization, like are they all perfect? You know, no. Basically, um, there's a really beautiful, great metaphor about persons who are involved in this process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, um, attaining self-realization is that we're all in a hospital, basically. Which can seem like a stark metaphor, but it's very apt, it's very appropriate. So basically, like in a hospital, you have um, all different kinds of patients, basically, with different illnesses. And they're all individual. But you have, for example, some patients, they're really good patients. You know, they just take their medicine. They're very simple-minded. They, they just, yeah, I'm, I'm sick, I need to get well. Um, so please give me the medicine and whatever, whatever it looks like, I'll do it. You know, and, and they get well quickly. And then you have others who, one day I want to take my medicine, another not. So they may not progress in their health so well. Um, and then you get different, at the same, even up beyond that, different levels of, oh, this patient's been in here for two weeks, so they're looking like this. And this patient's been here for a whole year, so they're looking a lot better. So actually, the process of self-realization is also a bit like that. For example, I haven't been practicing for very long, and so, you know, am I a perfect person? Of course not. You know, I have so many flaws and faults. But if someone like me were to stick to this process of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, whispering, singing, screaming, shouting, whatever I need to do, you know, on a daily basis is um, ideal and preferred, especially like the medicine, like the way you take it, you know, it's, um, you experience a lot more benefit that way. Um, if I were to stick to this process throughout my whole entire life, like let's just say for the next 50 years, for example, until I die, you know, those flaws that you see now in me will, will just fade away, like, quite quickly, um, over the years and the decades, until you do experience some purity, and that's, is that like a pride thing? No. Um, the more pure you become, the more you can actually give to others and care for others. So it's, it's, it really becomes a selfless thing. Whereas if, you know, if you still have all those issues and problems, how useful can you really be to anyone else? Um, maybe a little bit on a material level, like you can buy someone clothes, you can give them a job, all these kinds of things, but what about their true level, the level of the soul, which is the self? Um, and why care about the soul? You know, is it even real? Um, the yoga texts explain that um, a symptom of the soul is consciousness. That's how we are conscious right now. That's how I'm animate, how I'm moving about. And that's why when people die, in other words, when people leave their bodies, I mean, yeah, what's leaving the body? You know, aren't we the body? You know, and if we were the body, we, nothing would change. You know, there, would, there wouldn't be a change of conscious, unconscious, if we were just the body. So something has left the body, and what has left the body is the spirit soul. Um, that's what illuminates the whole body. That's what gives it life. And that's why we see that change between life and death. And um, obviously I'm being very simple about how I'm explaining it, but there are, there's a great science behind it and many studies also, even, even from, you know, as far as I'm aware, like Western, so to speak, scientists, you know, done on this kind of thing, done on consciousness, done on the soul done on, you know, um, uh, near-death experiences, you know, people hovering above their bodies and they can see everything that's going on. And then they're being able to recount and explain what the surgeons were talking about and things. It's like, how is that possible? You know, so there's, there's, there's basically a whole world that we don't know about, but we should and we must know about, especially if we want to feel some genuine, if, if we want to feel genuine satisfaction. Um, you know, because Lego can't satisfy us. And you might think, of course, I'm not crazy. Well, Lego is just the same as a cell phone, as a lipstick, as a house. It's all matter. 
you know, there's actually no difference. A child playing with Lego and an adult man or woman playing with their house, there's absolutely no difference. It's just um, one's more expensive than the other. Sorry. You know, but that's the reality, and we really need to see that and see that for what that is. Um, so it's really, we have to go beyond the matter at some point in our life. We have to go, rise beyond the material, the matter, rise beyond the Lego and the lemons and all these kinds of things. Because we can see the effect of all these things. They're just temporary. They're flickering. And, um, you know, I mean, isn't that normal? Things just flicker and that's it. And, of course, that's what we've come to know. That's what we've become comfortable with as well. And, you know, if we don't know any different, then we're innocent. We really are. We're not bad people. We just haven't been taught by anyone, you know, that there is more to Lego, basically, in big houses and little houses and, you know, um, all this matter, that there's more to the body. Um, otherwise, why, 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 are, why aren't people so satisfied? You can see it in their eyes, just walking along the street. Hard stares in the eyes, so frustrated, so tense, so stressed. And, um, you know, people are so busy, so why would they have time to look for anything else? So this is the time right now to really um, sort of percolate these deep thoughts within the mind and um, look for something higher. In fact, you don't have to look, even have to look. It's right here. It's within one mantra. So it's called the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Maha is how it's explained in the four meaning great. The greatest mantra. The most cleansing, the most purifying, um, the most pure mantra for this age of Kali Yuga. And um, it goes Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And maybe we can all say it together a second time. So it's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So it's very, it's kind of catchy, like it's similar names. So it's comprised of three names. And I don't know in total how many, like, words there are, I have to count, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so now we can go along into a melodious style of chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And, um, yeah, so this, this style is called Kirtan. Um, and basically one person, they, they chant this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in a melodious manner, manner um, and the second mantra gets chanted together with all of us. So that, that's generally the process, but because this is all virtual and digital on my cell phone and on Facebook and, and maybe on YouTube or whatever, um, uh, you can either listen the whole time, like you've been listening to this talk, um, or we can do a call and response style, or we can just sing together, or, you know, if, if singing's not your thing, because different things are our thing, um, feel free to, as I chant along, whisper it, talk it, shout it, scream it, whatever you need, because we all need to oppose our love and our feelings and our thoughts into something. The only difference is how we've currently been trying to oppose our heart, our love, our feelings, our thoughts um, into the things that we're currently trying to oppose them into. Um, there's no satisfaction there. It seems that way. But um, if we were satisfied, why would the effect be temporary? So that we really need to um, consider and think about, reflect on, sit on, sleep on, um, which you're all welcome to do. So I will begin. Yeah. And we'll start. And yeah, just again using my hands as instruments because I have no instruments. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare. Hare 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 Hare
there so um, maybe we'll do another little melody to end with so please hold on to your seat belts and your scarves and your hats
for participating. It really is a group effort. The more people that join in with these kinds of kirtans, mantra meditations, Hare, the Hare Krishna Maha mantra meditation, the better and the more powerful it is. But really what's most important is the heart because um, again, like I was mentioning before, we hear this kirtan, this Hare Krishna Maha mantra kirtan, this invitation is that we, you know, we have hearts, basically. No one doesn't have a heart. Even if you can think of the darkest kind of people out there who do the most abominable things. You know, like, for example, I'll be euphemistic, because I don't know who's listening to this video, but someone who takes advantage of someone. And maybe someone who takes advantage of someone that's under 18. You know, that kind of thing. You know, people consider quite dark. Um environment and all these kinds of things. They actually have a heart. They do. But it's where are we reposing our heart? Where are we reposing our love? And imagine if those people who do the things that maybe you're imagining as I'm describing the same thing that I'm trying to describe. Um, imagine if they started chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which really does open the heart. They would they'd actually lose their taste for doing what they're currently doing, which is amazing, it's incredible. You lose your taste for what the yoga and meditation texts describe as pale things in comparison. You know, so also, if you can think of all the things that we're currently trying to find enjoyment in, all these temporary things, and most dark, abominable things that I'm not going to be very detailed about it because they are quite dark um, and violent and abusive. Um, they're also temporary, you know, and the, the effect that the, the perpetrator, whoever, whoever it is, the, the main character, so to speak, um, the things that they're doing, um, the effect or whatever kind of satisfaction they're trying to get out of it, because that's what we're looking for. It doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter what we're doing, it doesn't matter how we're living our life. You could be a cannibal, you know, you're still trying to get some temporary satisfaction out of that activity. And the satisfaction is only temporary, and because it's temporary, it's not satisfaction. Because you're not satisfied. And so you want more. You want more human flesh. Whatever it is, you know. Everyone has been somewhere in their life, you know, that they don't like, or done something that they don't like. And things that they like, temporarily. But um, that's the thing, is that it only lasts five seconds basically, or somewhere around that, it's like a little buzz that you get, it doesn't matter what it is. So this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and one of the names within the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is Krishna, um, that name is described as, the reserv as being the reservoir of all pleasure, which can seem a little utopian, idealistic, and of course we force so many like ideas, utopias, ideologies, even in current modern Western society, try this and you'll be happy, all this kind of stuff. And you might say, I don't fall for it. Well, on some level we do actually, you know, because we look at all the romantic comedies and, and deep within our mind, you know, we think, oh, I wish there was someone that could love me in the world like that, you know. On a level we know that that's what we're thinking. 
that once you start, once we start chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, all of those desires and false desires, basically, false promises just fade away and then you just come to your real you. And then you can really start to exercise your full potential, your full strength. You become so strong because you're no longer being, like, chained by these desires, basically, that that um, a lot of them we can't fulfill. And if we do, the fulfillment is temporary. I mean, how many, how many relationships last a whole lifetime? Not very many. And of those that last a whole lifetime, were those relationships, did they fully satisfy the heart? So when you really get down to, or is it just like, I'm just with this person, I should stick it out. Maybe I'm, my six, I'm in my 60s now. It's the right thing to do. It's, it's the socially acceptable thing to do, so I shouldn't break up with this person. Even though life, it's kind of dry and life's kind of dry and I don't really know what to do about it. So this Hare Krishna Mahamantra can give you the juice that we're all looking for. It can give us, you know, give you the juice. Um, and there's another beautiful metaphor um, that likens our mind to a record. Record, a record meaning like a record, like in a record player, you know, the big black disc. Um, for those of you who are younger, who are younger than I am, it, it's like a it's like a giant CD basically disc. Although maybe you don't even know what a CD is, <laughs> but because we're all like everything's on the phone and things now, so understandably you probably don't even know what a CD is. But no, it's like a giant black disc, and it has like um, around the disc there's lots of lines. You can see that they're grooved into. So it's like lots of circles basically within the big black disc. Um, and grooved into the disc. And so this this lovely lady, um, her name is, she might have a new name now, but at least her name was, if it isn't still, um, Janavi Harrison. And uh, she also practices this, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra meditation. And she um, has a beautiful voice and uses that talent to chant this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra beautifully. Um, all over the world, I believe, wherever she she travels or can travel, to as far as I believe, and um, it was her that was describing this metaphor about how our mind is like a record, and um, all of the things that we've gone through that have sort of ingrained certain thoughts in our in our mind. A lot of the time, they're not very helpful thoughts, um, and even if you look at the positive thoughts that we have, I mean, no thought really is sat satisfies the heart, like, for a whole lifetime. You know, even the positive thoughts, like, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful, they really don't satisfy the heart. So even if you look at both positive, because there's so many, like, positive psychology things out there, new age things about positive thinking, about questioning your thinking, looking at your thoughts, and just looking at the positive, seeing the positive, but even those don't fully satisfy the heart. Because why are we still, you know, taking shelter of so many temporary things after, after doing these positive psychology things, you know? So, um, yeah, so she was, Janavi Harrison was saying that, this beautiful lady Janavi Harrison was saying that these grooves in the record are like all of the baggage that we have, all of the thoughts that we've accumulated over our lifetime or, our, or, or over our life up to where it is now, whatever age you are. And she's, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra it actually creates new grooves within the record. Grooves that go beyond the positive and the negative thinking and thoughts. Um, grooves that just uplift you in a way that both positive and negative thoughts do not at all. And grooves that satisfy you in a way that everything else doesn't. Is this escapism? As far as I'm aware, escapism always leads to um, destruction and degradation. If you look at any kind of escapism, escapism, escaping, sorry, I meant to say, in gaming, in TV watching, in eating food stuffs, food, um, escaping in work, it always leads to some sort of mental illness, destruction, degradation, or physical illness that. This Hare Krishna Maha Mantra goes beyond all of that. It, it doesn't, you can see in the people who have been chanting this mantra over a whole lifetime. They're just, 
they're glowing, genuinely. Like, and they're not wearing any foundation or nothing's caked onto their skin. They, they're just so effulgent and, um, I don't know, the next thing I'm going to say is this, um, in relation to these people, not myself, but these people who have been chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra over decades, this is something to be envious of. Not at all. It's something to really look up to and be inspired by. Wow, they have so many wonderful, great qualities. Wow, they're, they almost look like an alien that I've never seen. Then you're like, okay, they have something. That's something that I've been searching for and craving for. Maybe not in the way that they're presenting, because I've been looking for it in so many different ways. This satisfaction, this fulfillment, this love, this genuine love. Because if we're really honest, two bodies coming together and rubbing up on one another doesn't produce love. That, that's just a reality and that's just a fact, you know. Um, two minds getting together and intermingling with one another doesn't produce love. Um, so we can see that matter does not produce love. It has to be something spiritual, something transcendental. And of course, the term spiritual is often closely related with religious and religiosity. And... Um, these two terms can be often feared, or there's a lot of concern around these terms. Um, and fair enough, because there is so much Kali Yuga, you know, um, quarrel and hypocrisy um, in relation to these two terms. You know, so it's like, who do we trust? What do we trust? So at the end of the day, this is simply a matter of experience. You chant this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and, you know, you'll get the experience. It's really that simple. Um, so there's this, there's this great term that it's simple for the simple, complicated for the complicated. So people who want to make it complicated, you know, they, they probably uh, will experience a lot of trouble, you know, along the path. But if you just simply take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahama, it doesn't matter what your life looks like. Your life will change in ways that you, you just can't even... Um, or see, for the better, you know, always for the better. And, um, yeah, in regard to the term religion, religious, religiosity, and religiosity, um, really the main thing is this mantra. You know, so you could be a mother of five and you have a job, on a business, whatever it is, whatever your life looks like, um, you could be homeless. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, and all that really matters is that one starts chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and then everything just gets arranged from there and everything transforms from there. And um, it's amazing also at the same time how much, yes, a religion is attached to this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra chanting, but it's amazing how many people get, as far as I'm aware and I'm assuming as well, people can get so caught up in the religious side of it, you know, all these like, oh, what clothes am I wearing, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, I must be at the, the temple every Sunday, whatever it is. But then they actually lose sight of the main thing which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamacha with complete and utter attention and complete, as much as, much as you can with these things, attention and affection and love. Everything comes from that. There's an amazing saying by a great soul, His Holiness David Muta Swami and Maharaja. And um, that's one of, his, one of the things that he says that everything comes from the chanting. So, you, like, if someone were to take that and just make the, this mantra, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, their life and soul, you know, they'll experience more benefit, more effect than someone who just gets caught up in, in everything else and then loses sight of, oh, actually, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Like, yeah, it's not so, no, it, it's the most important thing. So, for someone that can balance everything, that's very admirable, you know. Um, for example, not just the religious side, but their work and their family life and 
at the same time very much keep the Hare Krishna Mahamantra the alive and so that like <laughs> hats off to them. That is the that is the goal. Um because that shows responsibility. But at the same time, even if you just take this most important element of chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra and make it your life and soul, um, that is responsibility. That's that's taking responsibility for your real self and your real self care. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, everything else is going to go. Come and go, come and go. Every year, every day, every minute. You know, this can be the center, the thing that grounds us throughout everything. You know, usually we let our mind ground us, but it doesn't ground us at all. Um, yeah, so some more food for thought. I hope I haven't left anyone who's listening here hanging just on that thought from those last few sentences. But um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. Meditation got something out of it, and uh, I'll try and I'll try and do my best to um, produce and upload a, a new video every day for those who like these videos. And uh, yeah, please also if you have any time, it's okay if you don't. No worries here. Like, feel free to leave any comments, mainly of how I can improve, correct, um, because yeah, it's you guys that are most important. Um, who are receiving this uh, meditation and presentation. So, yeah, please make this a daily meditation if it benefits you. And uh, I'll hopefully see you all tomorrow. That's the goal, that's the plan. Hare Krishna.